Hello, I'm Claudia Fevola and in this video I'll tell you about a joint work with Daniele Agostini, Jelena Mandelstam and Ben Fur and Bert Sulfels named KP Solitons from Tropical Limits. The object of study is the KP equation, which is a partial differential equation that describes the motion of water waves, like the one in the picture. And here the function P is a function in three variables, meaning two space variables x and y, and one time variable t. And we seek solution of this form, where the function tau satisfies the so-called Herota differential equation. And one nice fact is that uh, it is possible to construct a solution to, a K, to the KP equation starting from an algebraic curve. And to do this, one needs to define the so-called Riemann theta function, which is a complex analytic function depending uh, on, two, of two, on two parameters, meaning z, which is a complex g-dimensional vector, and b, which is so-called uh, uh, Riemann matrix, which is uh, a g by g symmetric matrix that we normalize to have negative definite real part. And this function theta appears to as an uh, infinite sum uh, of exponentials over the, all the integers lattice points. And uh, so how do, we re how do we construct a curve out of this theta function? We need to parameterize the vector z uh, using three coordinates uh, in a weighted projective space, meaning u, v, and w. And we assign these degrees uh, 1, to the UIs, degree 2 to the BIs, and finally degree 3 to the WIs. And um, in a paper called the, the Dubrovin Trifold of an Algebraic Curve, in 2020, Agostini, Selic, and Sternfeld defined a um, manifold that uh, comprises all of the points in such projective space, uh, weighted projective space, such that uh, the tau function corresponding to those points um, satisfies the Herota differential equation and then gives a solution to the KP equation. And uh, these, equation, these manifold happen to be a threefold and they also give explicit equations for this manifold. Another interesting type of solutions to the KP equation are the so-called soliton solutions. To, defi to define them, we need to fix two natural numbers, um, k and n, with k smaller than n, and the vector of parameters uh, kappa, k kappa 1 to kappa n. Um, the tau function is, in this case is a finite sum of exponentials, where the indices run over all possible uh, subsets of k elements in the set uh, from one of natural numbers from 1 to n. And the motivation for this comes from the following result by Sato, saying that uh, a function tau is, uh, uh, of that shape is a solution to the rota differ differential equation if and only if the point P is actually a vector of Pluger coordinates in the Grossmannian Kn. And we define such a tau function to be a Kn soliton um, solution to the Kp equation. The main idea for our work is then to study a solution to the Kp equation which arises from algebraic curves in the case in which the smooth curve is defined over a non-Archimedean field k, such as a finite extension of the rational numbers or um, the field of Poussey series. And what we observe is that when epsilon goes to zero, then the theta function becomes a finite sum of exponentials, like the sum in the tau function we saw in the previous slides. And indeed, the, tau, the function p uh, defined in this way becomes exactly a soliton solution to the KP equation. So we first want to look at the degeneration of the theta function for this type of curves. 
So to do this, we take x to be a small curve of genus G over the field K. And by fixing an, an orientation of the graph, uh, we can compute the, uh, the group H1, which happens to be a free abelian group of rank G. And uh, we're interested in the special fiber of such curves. And in this case, the um, curves will look like um, graph with G cycles, as the one in the picture for the case of a genus 2 hyperelliptic curve. So since the group H1 um, is a free abelian group of rank G, we can define, we, we have a finite basis and we can use it for defining the Riemann matrix arising from such a curve. So if we say E is the number of edges in the graph, we defined the matrix lambda to be the G by E matrix whose each row records the coordinate of each, ga uh, of each gamma I uh, with respect to the standard basis of Z E. And the Riemann matrix of this graph then is given by the product of lambda with delta and uh, lambda transposed, where delta, delta is the diagonal matri E by E matrix, um, which records the edge length of this dual graph. And here we see an example. So supposed to consider a genus 2 a uh, hyperelliptic curve defined by the polynomial y square equal f of x, where f of x is this polynomial with six distinct roots. And uh, these six distinct roots determine a subtree with six leaves, as the one uh, on the left, um, which has a unique hyperelliptic covering by a metric graph of genus 2, like this one. And uh, from the graph, we can read of the tropical Riemann matrix Q, as we did before. And, um, and this is the case for this curve. Now, consider this family of Riemann matrix, depending on the parameter epsilon. And um, here, Q is the Riemann matrix, and R of epsilon is a G by G matrix with analytic entries that um, converges to that converges when epsilon goes to zero, and uh, once we fix a point in the in R to the G, we can consider the theta function evaluated um, at this shift of the point Z. And depending on the, this family uh, matrix B of epsilon. And um, what we want for this sum of exponential is the first term here to converge. So asking for this term to be greater or equal than zero is then the same as uh, asking for this inequality to hold. And this is what happens any time that we take A to be a point in the Voronoi cell of Q. And moreover, once we fix A to be a point in the Voronoi cell of Q, we can define the Deloni set associated to such a point and to the matrix induced by the, uh, the, the matrix induced by the matrix Q. As, this, uh, as the set of lattice points for which the equality holds. And what happens is that for such points, uh, this uh, like term in the exponential goes to uh, zero. And so here is the theorem that explains the, the generation of the theta function. And so if we fix a point in the Voronoi cell and the tropical Riemann matrix, then the theta function converges to a finite sum of exponential, which will be supported on the Deloni set uh, associated to the point A and the matrix Q. And uh, here, the AC will be just some parameters that will depend on the point in the Deloni set that we're taking and on the matrix R when, R when epsilon goes to zero. So here is an example again where when the genus equal to. 
So for example, in the case in which the matrix Q is given by the identity matrix, then the Deloni set is just given by the uh, two dimensional square given by this point. And the associated theta function then becomes a, finite, um, a sum of four exponentials. So once, so as we have just seen, once we have a Deloni set, uh, the theta function is a finite sum of exponential, and we can define the tau function arising from such a theta, um, a theta function. And uh, this is the way it looks in this case. And we define the Erhota variety to be the variety of all points A, U, V, and W in this um, product space, such that the tau function satisfies the Erhota's differential equation. And um, so we want to give explicit equation to this Erhota variety. And to do, to do this, we make the following remark. So the Erota's differential equation can be written in terms of Erota differential operators in this way, where the function, uh, where the um, where p is a polynomial depending on the three variables that we have, and um, which has also a physical meaning, and it's called um, solid on dispersion relation, and this will play um, central role for defining the generators of the Rota bilinear form, of the Rota variety. So for any two indices KL um, in the set from 1 to M, where M is exactly the number of points in the Deloni set, we define the polynomial PKL depending on U, V, and W as the val by evaluating the polynomial P in these points, uh, where CK and CL are points in the Deloni set. And uh, this is a hypersurface in the, um, in the 3G minus 1 dimensional uh, weighted projective space. And the polynomials defining HC will be combinatorially described um, nicely, by, uh, nicely by using the, the, this set. So the set C2 is defined as the set of uh, all sums of distinct points, uh, all possible sums of distinct points in the, um, the Loni set. And moreover, we say that a point in this set C2 is uniquely attained if there exists precise, precisely one index pair KL such that CK plus CL is equal to D. And in that case, KL, we say to be a unique pair. So this is the, our theorem that gives the explicit equation for the Rota bilinear form, uh, for the Rota variety. And we say that the Rota variety is defined by this type of quartics anytime the KL is a unique pair. And by this sum of the PKL polynomials times the AKAL, where AK and AL are the ones which appeared in the degenerate the theta function for all non uniquely attained points D in C2. And moreover, if all the points in C2 are uniquely attained, then HC is defined exactly by N2 quartix PKL. And this is the case in which the Deloni set is a simplex. So here is an example. Again, as we've seen before, uh, a possible um, Deloni set when G is equal to is the case uh, in which the Deloni uh, set is a square. In this case, the set C2 is given by uh, five pairs in which four of them are uniquely attained and they will contribute with these polynomials. And uh, the point one one is um, not uniquely attained and it will contribute with this polynomial. And uh, for any point uh, in the Hirota variety associated to, to such the Loni set, we can write uh, the tau function as a two-four soliton given by 
the this matrix in the Grassmannian 2 4. So another interesting approach to construct solution to the KP equation is the one arising from the Sato Grassmannian. And this is interesting to us because this setting is totally algebraic and hence allows uh, symbolic computations. So we take V to be the space of Laurent series and we consider the natural projection map pi that takes a Laurent series and sends it into, the, into its principal part. So we define a point in the Sato Grassmannian as a subspace such that the dimension of the kernel of the map pi restricted to u is equal to the dimension of the co-kernel of the map pi restricted to u, and both of these are finite. So the question now is, how can we represent a point in the Sato Grassmannian? Um, so each point in the Sato Grassmannian is represented by an infinite basis, and um, f1, f2, and so on, and each of these fi uh, can be expanded as a Laurent series. And then we take all the coefficients in the Laurent series and we plug, in, we plug those in uh, an infinite matrix Xi. So this is the way um, matrix for representing a point in the Sato Grassmannian appears. And uh, um, in particular, this has this uh, particular shape, meaning that it is infinite vertically and there's, there exists an L such that uh, from that point on, one just gets once on the diagonal and all zero elements be, uh, above the ones and um, non-zero elements are allowed uh, below the ones. And so how is the Sato Grassmannian connected to the KP equation? By introducing some uh, combinatorial tools, it is possible to define a tau function starting from a uh, point in the Sato Grassmannian. In particular, we define a Maya, a Maya diagram to be an infinite sequen sequence M of integers in, uh, um, in decreasing order, uh, such that mi is equal to minus i for i large enough. And there is a bijectic correspondence among Maya diagrams and partition. And thanks to the shape of a point in the Sato Grassmannian, it makes sense to define these determinants associated to a partition and then to a Maya diagram. And the tau function associated to, um, to a matrix xi is then um, um, uh, um, infinite sum of this shape where um, we sum over all possible partitions and where the sigma lambda are just the sure polynomials. And uh, a theorem by Sato says that uh, the function tau is a solution to the KP hierarchy where the KP hierarchy is just like um, an infinite set of partial differential equation that generalize the KP equation. And conversely, any solution to the KP hierarchy needs to have exactly this form. So we want to understand which is the relation among the soliton solutions that we defined be, um, before and this uh, tau function introduced by Sato. And so what we notice is that a Cayenne and soliton can be uh, expanded into shared polynomials in this way, where we allow just partitions where the first three terms are non-zero and all the others are zero. And um, these uh, terms C lambda uh, will be defined um, by using the Pluger coordinates uh, and this delta lambda is just like a determinant depending on the KIs. And so it is also possible to define 
a solution, a point in the south of Grassmannian, starting from a smooth projective curve of genus G, defined over our field K. To do this, we need to fix a divisor D of degree G minus 1 on the curve and a point P on it. Um, so what happens is that any time that we take two integers m less than n, we get a sequence of, um, of inclusions of Riemann rock spaces in which in each of these we allow uh, just poles at the point P up to a certain, a certain order. And so if we fix z to be a local coordinate on x, at the point P and M to be the order of D at the point P, then um, the multiplication by Z to the M plus one defines a K linear map between the Riemann-Roch space in which any order of poly P is um, allowed and the space of Lorentzius. And then a result by Siegel and Wilson says that the image of the space H0 there um, um, under this map Yota is a point in the south of Grassmannian. So in particular, we now focus on the case of genus 2 hyperelliptic curve. So suppose X is a hyperelliptic curve of genus 2 defined by these polynomials where the uh, by this polynomial where the lambda i are distinct roots and um, if p is one of the two pre images of the point at infinity under the double cover of x into p1 and uh, z is a local coordinate around the point p we can write um, the polynomial defining the curve in this way. In this case, for example, the uh, alpha i are polynomials in the lambda i's, in particular, alpha zero is equal to one. And we can consider three kinds of divisor in this case of degree one. And uh, for m greater or equal than three, we can define these functions. And these functions will provide um, a basis for a point in the south of Rasmanian corresponding to such curves. So if we write ui as the, for the image according to, um, under the map iota of the Riemann-Roch space corresponding to the divisor di, then a result by Nakayashiki uh, tells us how to define um, the basis for the sets, you, for, for the points in the, in the south of Grassmannian, u0, u1, and u2. And we use this result to implement a method in Maple for the divisor d0 equal p on hyperelliptic curves over the um, affinite extension of the rational number. And we can compute a truncated version of the tau function defined by Sato, and where here n will be the order of precision. And um, you can find it on this website. That is all. Uh, I thank you for your attention.